that I believe they are most important ones because I'm taking care of more ancient history than Chernobyl is, so I'm going to be taking a broader view on that. It seems to me that our key problem today is, as in the culture heritage, is not just funding, but a lot of inertia and pullbacks from the community and uh, those engaged external agents of influence. And this inertia is partly encouraged by lack of funding, but actually there are different quantitative bottlenecks. I would like to thank a lot the IT sector. These guys are being actively involved in preserving and protecting cultural heritage. So very often they are real locomotives of uh, the national heritage preservation. Our main problem, however, is that we do not have the updated list of historic memorials, nor cultural important places or archaeological. We do not have an updated list. The only uh, one published dates back to 1995. And it, it is so slow, this update goes so slowly. It, whenever you manage to add a, and the next item on the list, and it takes so much time that this item already disappears or this object is already getting destroyed. With the support of the Ukrainian Culture Foundation, I'm going to read the name of it. This is called Cultural Heritage in, with Dear Informational Ukrainian Sustainable Development Model. What's interesting that the one who applied and now implements the project is the Institute, the Geographic Institute of the National Academy of Science. They introduced their vision of how the database should be created as alternative to this official list of national heritage items and objects. This should be an interactive database that could be available somewhere on an online platform or website. I think this is the great idea. Every traveler who could see any kind of great place or a mosaic or even a memorial of the Soviet mon mon monumentalist, he or she can tag it on the map where the location is, see if it is part of those part of the list of those nationally significant and historic objects. And if not, this tourist or any person can make a suggestion. Okay, I can see something that seems to me a great interest for the historians, and this could be an historic artifact. And then that's just um, the theoretical things. Then there are the experts, the local experts can reach out to the place and examine. This is all in theory, but the model was already developed as well as the software. The project is at a stage uh, supported by uh, UCF was completely implemented. After a year, a pilot project was initiated or will be initiated. It's going to be called differently, but using the software and using the developments of the the Geographic Institute of the National Academy of Science, will be implementing the pilot project in in Vinitsa, I think, region. We had arrangements with the regional government. We announced the project and it started. But the decentralization issue and its impact is reflected on the fact that um, it is the local uh, state administration that really influences the project because they agreed to run the project. There was nothing heard about the project. And last year I got interested to learn more about it because I saw this platform is still available online, but there is no possibility to tag anything you cannot, nor you can see the list of those um, important historic places or items. There's no official information provided, however, but unofficially I learned that the local government is not giving any funding to support the project. And and even if, if there's someone tagging, um, I mean, the local enthusiasts, tourists, 
or artists are tagging things. We only have two people, so we cannot work uh, and process all the tags and requests about the newly identified artifacts and objects. We just do not have vehicles. We do not have human and nor financial resources. So we're coming back again to this issue that our second problem is in a cultural heritage is shortage of people. And it's caused by many factors. I think it's not only about funding. We have HR shortage because we have very poor demand for for this profession, the museum expert. We we saw the we saw by regions how many people uh, are ready to go to the universities and institutes. So there are only eight vacant places and the universities. It's not just because the ministry requests so little, but because there is a uh, little demand from the regions. This is not a popular profession. So lack of promotion is our third problem. So it's there is lack of personal responsibility of those um, uh, of uh, the, this promotion. Plus, we are not quite capable of doing that. We're not actually um, aware how it works. We're not experienced. And this is probably the main, I mean, a major problem, if not the only, if not the main one, completely. There are, uh, you know, the local governments are not investing into this. They do not think it is profitable. They do not think this is something really important for them. It doesn't pay. But what's uniting all those problems is there is lack of promotion. If we ha had actually uh, good promotion, there would have been interest from local governments. In all the times, politicians love media. They love uh, disseminating information about them. They love telling how great they are. If there was promotion, there would have been politicians and local government people who would be encouraged to actually open something like this. and. Uh, provide more opportunities to this. In Lviv, you know, they're a city mayor and uh, they are actively promoting those things and they are in control of the funding agenda. And also we can see the same thing in Odessa. Uh, they are reaching a lot of success stories by attracting more attention and of the community. We're not only having our museum audience, but also much more we have the potential audience where we can reach out to and based on them we can develop our new tours, new interactive programs, etc. So it seems to me that actually our major problem is lack of goodwill to promote things. And let us be honest, we're not skilled and capable of doing this. This is where we need the IT guys to help us do that because they are aware of the most state of the art technology. I think if we could cooperate with them, the UCF supported project, projects and all that experience has shown enough how productive this cooperation can be. There are a lot of uh, digitalized cultural heritage artifacts and sites thanks to cooperation with the IT sector. And once again, we're moving back to the cultural heritage. We understand this is not only about museum, this, this is about the monumental arts, this is about architecture, sites. With architecture sites and culture, there is another problem with funding because the sectoral people are not looking for alternative funding sources. Okay, IT companies arrive, and I, I, I know so many stories like this. They come over to the museum. Okay, guys, we can help you out here. We're going to take as little money as possible. The lowest price possible is offered. 
let us um, just develop something together. Museum people say, we cannot, we, we, uh, and let, uh, the IT guys say, let us take the grant for this, grant money. And the museum people say, we do not know how to apply for the grants. And that's not even a secret that I'm disclosing. I'm going to tell you a different one. For UCF, it's very important that the applicant could have an experience of working in the sector. So there have been so many problems uh, and issues from the community uh, with UCF because they submit applications, those applicants, the IT people, they actually apply a lot with the museum projects and experts cannot make a proper assessment because those IT people do not have any experience in the uh, cultural and heritage work. If you want to get money for culture, you need to represent the culture sector. And many IT people do not have this experience, unfortunately, as they want to apply for the grant programs. So there is need to cooperate. There is need to network, especially the cultural heritage. People need to build more awareness of how to seek grants and alternative funding sources. It's not something horrible. It is realistic to find the money. You just don't need to be scared. Do not be afraid to take re the responsibility and master the new skills and expertise. And of course, there is one more thing regarding a cultural uh, heritage preservation and protection. I know this is now lifted to the top government level. We do not have uh, the grant support for infrastructure projects from government. UCF cannot provide money to for renovation or restoration works, for instance. Even for the minimum uh, capital expenditures, we cannot allocate any money. A renovation cannot be handled physically within six months. And the reporting period is directly dependent on the law of Ukraine on the UCF. If that could, period could be extended to three years, we could have considered to support infrastructure projects through grants. And now to preserve cultural heritage uh, facilities and sites. People go to embassies, like the embassy of the United States is seeking for support. And coming back to preserving cultural heritage issues in the context of the national trage tragedies, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's uh, already time to finish. But I think it is important to remember and keep in mind that those tragedies are much older than Chernobyl or Holodomor or 1917 revolution. We had very traumatic experience of cooperating both of, uh, uh, of interactions with Poland and Lithuania uh, we should remember about the both world wars. Uh, in Vinica, for instance, where I come from, there are so many government officials who say, why should we maintain uh, this palace or this castle? Those were built by the Poles and we suffered from them a lot, but those are, were incredible palaces. This is our joint history, but because of that, traumatic experience, uh, we cannot now do a lot of things. So I, I think we need to go much deeper than these strategy, uh, tragedies, at least a couple of centuries back, because the same attitude is to the German sites. In the local museum in Kropiri, for instance, um, Krivirich, that city was built by the Czechs and the Germans. But the locals just neglect that and they just hate to say that. We need to start with the awareness raising from grassroots, from primary school. And probably we need to actually relieve this ethnical, ethnical um, 
issues and uh, different uh, ethnic, um, how to say it, um, restrain or tension. Well, regarding the last six months, uh, we know there are some of the new initiatives and they come from, from the communities themselves, from the culture heritage sector. We know the story about the flowers of Ukraine, that's one of the companies, they, the, the mosaics get destroyed of the Soviet heritage. I mean, partly because they are not appreciated, they're not that ancient to be perceived as something old and antique, but because this is part of the tragic experience as well. So this all talk is about the Soviet heritage. If there is a farmer, a state farmer in on a meal, depicted on the mosaic, people are saying, we don't need that. This is all cheating, this is all lies. This is also some tragic experience we need to Keep in mind that those mosaics in Pripyat, that social realism, they also trigger a lot of rejection and negative understanding. I don't know how to even say it, what people feel about that. Uh, it's like the feeling of something forced in their past. Maybe people had believed in something and then they got disappointed. Uh, but on the other hand, you can say those people were never happy in the past. I mean, there, there was a lot of stress, but uh, those Soviet memorials and sites uh, have to also be listed. But again, like I said at the very beginning, because there is no updated list of cultural heritage sites and artifacts we cannot actually push forward some of those programs. And if we fail to actually implement those projects and fund them at the local and regional level, and they will not never be funded unless they get promoted, then we cannot even speak about successful preservation of the nat national heritage. All the initiatives come from the from the communities themselves. Summing, sum, summing up, I should say that, you know, if you want to survive, you need to do something about it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for a very interesting intervention. We seem to have known about this in the culture sector, but I think it would be quite positive, po positive to have a forum about this by engaging representatives of cultural heritage, because we have so many representatives of museums with us, and I can hear some of the ideas from them, but they never talk about this publicly. We seem to have known about this for ages, but um, all these issues never become trends for active discussion. So thank you very much uh, again.